Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, first today, a little bit of news. I failed to qualify for the UK team for the World Sudoku Championship this year for the first time in six years, which is obviously a personal disappointment. However, I think the UK has a very strong team. The two qualifiers from the face-to-face -face event in Croydon, um, David McNeil and Tom Collier, they are excellent. I mean, they're both better than me. There's no doubt about that. I couldn't pretend they're not um, excellent competitors. Um, and David McNeil very likely to win the over 50s category as well, which um, I also covet. Um, and then the top two finishers at the UK um, Puzzle Championship, which is the online one, where, again, the top two will go through. It was David again and Sam Kappelman lyons who is not only um, a really good solver, but also creates our software. And <laughs> he's damn good at that, too. Um, now, because David appeared in both of those top twos, the next, there is a third place. And although I was third place in the online competition, um, it's Neil Zussman, another friend of mine, who was third in the face-to-face -face competition and because that takes priority he will be going to Germany and I wish that team of four the absolute best of luck I think they'll do well and uh, I'll certainly be rooting for them now Sam as well as being a really good solver and a really good computer programmer has now set us a puzzle as well and this is a completely new variant I'm calling it hidden clone and the rules are that there's one shape in the grid, as you can see, and that shape has a clone somewhere in the grid where exactly the same numbers appear in the same pattern. So we have to find that as well as complete the rest of the grid by normal Sudoku rules. So I'm going to have a go. Um, and let's start with a bit of normal Sudoku, ignoring the shape for now. We've got a four in column one and a four in column two. So the four in column three has to be in the bottom box. And that places the four in the bottom row over there. We get a four in, oops, in one of these cells at the top. Um, and a four in one of these two, but I don't know which one yet. Um, now this has blocked off one of the columns in this box. So one must be in one of those two cells in that box, and one of those two in that box. Um, what else have we got? Two must be in one of these two. Uh, seven must be in row seven in that box. Um, Hmm, not all that much that I'm seeing apart from that. Three, one. Ah, look, nines into this top, top left box. Um, there's a nine down here and a nine here. And that rules out four of the five empty cells here. So the only place for a nine is there now. Um, and does that help us? This has to be a seven or eight. No, I'm not sure. Now maybe it's time to look at the shape. And I mean, there's quite a lot of numbers given in the shape, one, two, three, and four. Could that shape be start in row, could the other clone start in, can't start in row one, because obviously it would need another one, two. Could it start in row two? Yes, it could start here with a one here, four here, which is quite plausible. So that's quite likely. Could it be here? One, seven, two, three, four. No, that's impossible because there's another four there. So it can't start in row three. Could it start in row four? If it did, the three would have to be here. So it would have to be one. And that's not possible. We've just ruled that out. So that's not right. Could it start in row five? No, oh no, because the four would have to be in row seven, and that would have to be a one if the four was right. Could it start in row six? We've already got two, so it would have to be here. One, two, three, four, nine there. Oh no, that's not part of the shape, but it's still looking very possible that it could start there. Um, yeah, that's a definite 
seems like a possibility at the moment anyway, can't start anywhere down in row seven because, or below, because it's four cells tall. So it would be too tall to start in row seven, as it were. So, so we think it could be here, one there and three there. Now, what would that mean? One, I wouldn't rule anything out. Um, certainly seems possible. Yeah, I don't see why not. So, it, I mean, I'm just going to sketch these in. That would put a one there and a three there, which would force the two to there. We'd get a six here. One and five down here, and that's completed other numbers in the shape. We'd, ah, no, this doesn't work because we'd have a six in the clone next to that one. So that clearly isn't right. So the shape isn't down there. It must be back on row two where it actually overlaps the uh, clone we've been given. So that's better. We get um, a one here, two, three, four. Now. Ah, oh, and we've now got an extra one in the shape, and that goes there. Well, it would have to go there by ordinary Sudoku anyway. That's good. Um, now, this one can be five, six, or eight. But what, that would also have to be this cell in the clone. Maybe I'll just shade in the rest of the clone in color so that we know where we're looking for the complementary clone shape. There we go. So that's the overlapping cell, but we filled that in. And the rest of this shape um, should agree to that one. So, ah, well, it's got to have five, six, seven, eight in there somewhere. No, that's not all that helpful. Um, let's have a look. Four, five, six, nine, one, no. Uh, this square can't be a seven because it has to be the same as this, and that's got a seven in the same row. So the seven in column three has to be in one of those two. That now makes a one seven pair. So this must be an eight. Um, an eight, I say, which is not filling in now. That's very strange. Eight, no. Okay, this is, oh, because I haven't gone back to the colors, right? Eight, there we go. Um, and that makes this an eight. So now this one is five or six, and because it's in the same, it's the same cell as this, which is in the same columns of five, they have to be sixes. Now we have to put a five, seven up there, and in those two, so it must be five there, seven there. And we've got most of the shape completed now, which is great. What about this cell? So it can't be seven, three, six, four, nine, or one, or five. So it could be two or eight. I'm going to fill those in as possibilities, not actual Snyder notation, but it's just useful to know what those possibilities could be. So now up here we have four, six, and nine. One, seven, two. So this is three, eight, five up here, but we don't know the order, so don't worry about that. That's a six. And that finishes off our six in column eight. Must be there. That puts a six here in row eight. Um, and the last six in the grid is there. Okay. Sevens down here have been resolved now. So 12, 5, 7, 3. Now, shall we focus then on, there might be a bit more regular Sudoku we can do before going back to the shape. Um, oh yeah, the sixes at the top. Sorry, I hadn't finished off the sixes. They go there now. So nine is in one of those two cells. Um, seven, three, six, four, nine. Wow, oh, this has to be a five. It's the only place in column two where a five can go because we ruled out five from that cell. Um, does that help with anything else? Well, it puts a five in the central box in column six, but we don't know which one. 
0.17. 9 must be down the side, but we don't know. Now, I'm going to have a go at this cell. Now, imagine, I guess 2 is quite likely because of that 2. So let's try and rule out 8. If it was an 8 there, we'd have an 8 here, 8 here, 8 here. Um, that would put 8 there and 8 there. That's all possible. That's looking quite plausible. Now, the only place left for a 3 down here is there. These are 1 and 2. So this has to be 2 and this has to be 1. Or well, maybe I've chosen the way that does work, but I was expecting that has to be a 1 because it's the last possibility left for that cell. All the others are in the row and column. Um, 82614634. Oh, yeah, this box can be finished off because three gets placed immediately. Okay, that finishes this. Three, two, five there. Crikey, I'm hoping not to have to undo what I did now. Five. Three and five, we've got nine and seven to go. That's a five. This is nine and two, so we know which way around they are. Two, four, six, five, three. <coughs> These are one and nine to fill the column. Seven and one. Nine and seven. Two. Three and seven. Ah, no, it's not working. Something, oh my God, look at that, get all this way. I mean, there's probably something else going on. Two twos in the same column. So we'll go back all the way to those eights, which were wrong. And this might be why I'm not going to Germany, but there we go. So those eights were wrong. Instead, these must be twos, and that must allow us to finish a different way. So we've got one and eight here. That gives us two and three down there, two, three, nine and eight here. God, I wasn't expecting that to go wrong at that point. Nine, six, one, four, seven, eight, two. That can't be one. That can't be one because of that one. So this is a one in the bottom row. Um, doesn't advance us as much as I'd hoped. That can't be eight. Six, five, three, two, five. This cell again. Um, has to be a 1 because in the row and column we've got 65324 in the row, 789 in the column, that fixes that. And this has to be a 9 by the same sort of logic. So 947. Um, so these two are 8 or 7. Might see what I should be doing next, but we've got to do it by logic from here on in, obviously. Ah, oh, nine in this box has been decided. Now we've got one, eight, two, and three left to go. Um, wow, well, okay, this puzzle really has some teeth, you know. We've got almost everything done, and I still can't quite finish it off. So it's a it's a well composed puzzle. I'll have to say that five is in one of these top boxes. That has to be one or eight, because two and three are in the same column. So that has to be two or three. And I mean, I'm not filling in all the possibilities, but that's a two, three pair in the row. That's a one, eight pair in the row. Two must be down here in one of those. <coughs> so if that was a two, that would be a two, that would be two, that would be three, that would be three. Yeah, that would be three, five, that's possible. Hmm. It's very weird. I can't quite see what I should be doing at this stage now. This could be three or five, obviously. That could actually be three. Um, if this was a three, that would be two, that would be three, that would be two. 
three would be up here, and that's quite possible too. Four, seven, three, six, two, nine. That must be one or eight. Now, what numbers are being forced to be somewhere else? Three and five somewhere could be there. <sighs> Come on, there must be some way to get going. Nine is one of those two. Must be not spotting some way to progress at this point. That's one or eight. So if that was a one, that would be a one. Seven, seven, seven. And we'll put that as nine, nine, eight, eight, seven there. Ah, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, it, it's a long chain, but it doesn't work. So what I was working on, if that's a 1, that's a 1, that's a 7, 7 here in the central box in row four, row 5. Um, that would put the other 7 in row 4 there. That would move the 9 into row 6. 8 there, 9 there, and that 8 there would require this same cell that we just made a 7 to be an 8 as well, because there'd no, be nowhere else for an 8. So that is not a 1, that's an 8. Bit of a logic chain there to get us through that one. Hopefully that will allow us to finish off the puzzle now. Um, 7 there, 8 there now. What else can we get from that? Eight, that puts an eight up here. Um, four, six, seven, two, nine, eight. That's a three now. It's the only possibility. One and five. Oops, sorry. One and five. Three there. And that makes this one a five. Three. These ones are two and three in that order. That fixes five and three up there. Also two and three in the bottom left. Two and eight here. Now, one of these pairs must be done. This is nine and seven must be in that order. That gives us seven and one. One and five. Oops. Um, what's that? Nine. That's the five, and this is the last remaining five. So that gets the puzzle done. There's the two cloned shapes up there. Quite a, quite a complicated puzzle. I, I really liked the way that it worked between um, the shape and the regular Sudoku logic. Very nice puzzle. Pretty difficult, I thought. But if you've had a go at it and found it easier, do let us know. We're always very interested. Um, thanks very much for watching. Congratulations to Sam. Lovely puzzle. Well done on qualifying for the World Sudoku Championship and good luck there. And thanks very much for the um, software as well, which works so well. People are really loving it, I think. So there we go. That's uh, I'm going to call it Hidden Clone Sudoku. And thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.